Good afternoon. This is uh, Monday, July 22nd, 1 o'clock. We'll start our Beaver Creek Township trustee meeting. And uh, prior to that, we're going to start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We have an agenda. <coughs> Are there any uh, changes or corrections to the agenda? Yes, ma'am. If we could add the Small Business Administration and the pre-scheduled speakers, please. Okay. You we'll make? add that first if that's all right. Okay. Great. Alrighty. No other changes. No other changes, ma'am. Okay. I'll make a motion to approve the agenda as presented, <coughs> so, uh, as modified, adding the SBA speaker. Second. Mr. Kress. Yes. Ms. Waller. Yes. I'll make a motion to excuse Mr. Roberts from today's regular trustee meeting. Second. Mr. Kress. Yes. Ms. Waller. Yes. I'll make a motion to accept the general ledger report in the amount of $378,275.70 for the July 17, 2019 payroll. Second. Mr. Kress. Yes. Ms. Waller. Yes. I make a motion to accept the payment listing report in the amount of $140,732.57 for warrants through July 18, 2019. Second. Mr. Kress. Yes. Ms. Waller. Yes. Um, regarding the minutes, I would propose that we just defer that until the next meeting if we could separate the tax budget hearing um, from the regular trustee meeting, and then we can um, approve both of those sets of minutes separately. Okay. <coughs> if that's okay with you. That's okay with me. Okay, we have presentation of proclamations. Yes, ma'am. If we could start with a, uh, the pre-scheduled speaker from the Small Business Administration. I believe Julie's here to give us a presentation. No, I'm sorry. No, we have Chief, proclamations. Chief, we're going to go with the proclamations oh, first, I'm sorry. and then we'll go into speakers, if that's okay. I, I have it. Okay. Please, I'm, I'm Ms. Apologize. Wallace has two with her, and she will call you up. And I'd like the uh, Beaver Creek Chamber of Commerce to come. You are Amanda Byers, our Hi. CEO of Beer Creek Chamber of Commerce. Hi there. Mm -hmm. And we'd like to pro have a proclamation recognizing the contribution to the Beer Creek Chamber of Commerce during the 2019 tornado outbreak. Whereas Beaver Creek Township was struck by a devastating tornado on the evening of May 27, 2019, and the township's resources were exhausted during the response to the tornado and the following mitigation efforts. And whereas the Chamber of Commerce immediately stepped forward provide leadership and resources to support the community's recovery. And the Chamber took a leading role in volunteer and donation management and sharing information with the community through the establishment of an informational website and the printing of informational flyers. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed that we, the trustees of Beaver Creek Township, recognize and appreciate the leadership and efforts provided by the Chamber of Commerce to help the community respond to the disaster in an effort to return to normal. And we proclaim, we the trustees on behalf of the community, thank the chamber staff, Ashley Vaughn, Amanda Byers, Alyssa Coyer, Co Coyer, and Morgan Turner for their hard work and dedication to both the business community and residents of Beaver Creek Township. Thank you. Thank you so much. And we have a proclamation. <laughs> recognizing the contribution of Clark County during the 2019 tornado outbreak. Whereas Beaver Creek Township was struck by a devastating tornado on the evening of the 27th, 2019, and the township's resources were exhausted during the response to the tornado and the following mitigation efforts. The Clark County Engine Emergency <laughs> Management Agency immediately offered their assistance and expertise gained from previous incidents. And the Clark 
County CMA provided technical support for collecting data assessment information, ongoing guidance and advice on managing assessment and mitigation efforts, and providing and coordinating over 30 volunteers for door-to-door -door damage assessment. Therefore, be it proclaimed that we, the trustees of Beaver Creek Township, recognize and appreciate the advice and guidance in post-disaster assessment and recovery efforts, and that be it further proclaimed that we, the trustees, on behalf of the community, thank the Clark County EMA, Director Alicia Delacondra, and her staff and Clark County Auditor, GIS Division Director Shane Gray, for their critical knowledge and assistance to support Beaver Creek Township. Thank you so much. <laughs> If you're in we front of the board, you're on the screen. So we'll yeah, be good. there you go. <laughs> we can poke you. We got them all. Yes, sir. They turn to the side so we get your mug shot. No. Fingerprints. <laughs> <laughs> yes.
Mississippi. And as always, thank you for your service. Thank you. You are all welcome to stay, um, but uh, you're also welcome to depart if you have other business to take care of. Thank you. Take care, guys. Be safe. Thank you. Thanks, Amanda. Thank you. You're welcome. And now we'll start with our pre-scheduled speakers. The SBA. Hi, everybody. Can you hear me? Thank you for allowing me to speak. I'm Julie Garrett from the Office of Disaster Assistance with the U.S. Small Business Administration. I just thought you would like to hear the latest figures that I have. And I also want you to know that these are from um, July 16th, we should get some more tomorrow or Wednesday, so I'll email you the updated figures. So for Greene County, so far the approved loan total is 1.7 million. It's almost 1.8. It's 1,700,700. And that is 31 approved home loans and two approved business loans with many more in the hopper. So I think that that figure is going to be going up. And then the overall um, declaration for all of Ohio today is up to twelve million eight hundred and forty-six thousand seven hundred thousand seven hundred dollars, twelve point eight million basically. Sure. And I just want to reiterate that the deadline to apply for FEMA and SBA is the nineteenth of August, and that means completed applications. You can't have started it or not have um, some of the paperwork in. It really needs to be in all the way so um, please let your people know your citizens know and also that there are no income guidelines like it's open to everybody and we really encourage people to apply and have that as a tool in their recovery toolkit okay thank you very much thank you so much do quick, you guys have any questions i had a quick question for okay. you so on the august 19th to clarify that is the deadline to apply yes if someone has been uh, my understanding is we are encouraging folks that are denied to reapply. Yes. So if they are denied um, after August 19th, will there are they is there still a window to reapply? I don't know how it works with FEMA because I work for SBA. Okay. But for SBA, yes, we have a process like from the day that you get that letter, you have 60 days to okay. so even if they apply, on the apply for reconsideration. <laughs> but let's say the letter says we just need more information. Well, you need to get on that and get sure. that information in. But there's still a window. If yes, they, there's a window. For some reason, so. Yes, okay. sir. All right, thank you. I know, too, with SBA, um, sometimes people can write letters for why they were a little bit late, and that can help them if if it's past the deadline. I still think the biggest misperception is that the SBA is only for businesses. Um, I know. Not for individuals. I so. agree. I think that and then maybe um, like somebody asked me, they think that it's only for like low income people, mm -hmm. that, that it's not for everybody. So there's no sure. upper income limit to apply for SBA. Sure. That's really important. And if people apply for SBA and their income is on the lower side, and we turn down their loan for some reason, we do refer them back to FEMA for additional grant consideration. So it behooves them to put that application in. Okay. okay. Thank you. So the right. takeaway, citizens, is to apply before August 19th, 2019, yes. to get your application in. Yes, and the Disaster Recovery Center is closing here tomorrow, so it'd be really good if you do that soon. <coughs> but SBA loans, you can still apply in person at Beaver Creek Chamber of Commerce, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. weekdays. We still have a center open. I've not heard anything about a closing date for that. So right. 
apply online if you want, disasterloan.sba.gov, but then if you need assistance one-on-one, -on -one, we do have people over there. Great. Thank you okay. so much Thank for coming you. in. I appreciate Thank it. You. Congressman Turner's office, Marty Heidi, we'd be happy to hear what you have to say. A report. We got a handout. Um, I'm here wearing two hats today. One is with the federal government, Department of Transportation, Transportation Security Agency, and also Department of Homeland Security, and also the state of Ohio. Um, the new driver's license law that went into effect in 2018 is becoming full effect in 2020. And if you haven't had an opportunity to get your driver's license, um, there are two kinds of driver's licenses available. If you take your old license in and just apply for the standard license, that's fine. You'll get the updated uh, format. However, that you will need to carry additional identification with you if you fly. So if you go through TSA at the airport with the standard driver's license, you're going to need another form of identification, like a passport or a birth certificate, that kind of thing. The compliant license is the new one. And for that, you need to take in a birth certificate. And if you were married um, since you were born, you need to take in your marriage certificate to show the paper trail from your original name to your married name. Uh, your Social Security card that shows your number, and also proof of Ohio residency. And this is um, a bill, an invoice, or something that shows your name and address on an envelope to show that that's where you receive mail. Ran into a problem in Cedarville where most uh, people receive their mail by post office box, which was not acceptable. So I would encourage people in Cedarville to go to the um, the Department of to get Auditor to get your tax document and also if you're a registered voter the Bureau of uh, the Board of Elections will have your name and address uh, mailing and home address um, so I just I will take questions but by October 1st of 2020 is when all the licenses will be kind of renewed and and present so uh, like I said if you have any questions um, you can log on to the website for more information, but that's the different kinds. And then the other thing I wanted to raise today is the scam, another scam, through the um, Office of the Inspector General of the Social Security Administration. People are calling and very convincingly saying that they're with the Social Security Administration and your benefits may be impacted um, unless we can verify your social security number. And um, in doing so, uh, we'll get your benefits reinstated. And they're very convincing. And there is a number to call for the fraud hotline if you happen to get a call. But my recommendation is clear. Social security and IRS will never call you on the phone. That's the, the bottom line message. And that's the really the easiest message to get out to citizens is don't answer a call from Social Security. If they have an issue with your benefits, they will send something to you in the mail. So that's the latest I have on that stuff. Well, thank you so much for bringing this to our attention and the citizens' attention. And we look forward to seeing you again. You will. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Marty, I would recommend if you can, uh, if you haven't already, if you can give the Social Security um, presentation maybe to the Senior Center. Um, oh. It might be a, a great audience. You know, that is to, a good idea. Um, that is a good idea. And we had a gentleman call our office, and he was 93, and the reason he didn't give his Social Security number to the caller was that he couldn't remember it. Right. So. But it might be helpful. Yeah, that's they're, a, that's they're a very tricky. Targeting. Very good idea. Mm -hmm. I will do that. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Beaver Creek Professional Firefighters, Local 2857. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Yep. Thanks for having me on your agenda today. Could you tell us your name? And <coughs> I'm Mike Michener. I'm the trustee with Beaver Creek Professional Firefighters 2857. 
Uh, I sent a copy of a proposal to uh, the Township Administrator, Mr. Zaharieff, uh, seeking uh, approval to install equipment to provide personal Wi-Fi for us as a group in township buildings, the, uh, you know, the stations. Uh, it would be at no cost <coughs> to the township or the trustees, no tax dollars. Um, it would just, <coughs> the agreement, <coughs> I don't know if you've had a chance to look at it, basically it just says, you know, it's just our property, you're giving us permission to put it in there and maintain it as a separate piece, uh, and that um, <coughs> we agree that it won't interfere with, like, the Wi-Fi that's already present, um, just so we can have a personal um, access to the internet. Uh, I would like to entertain any questions. If you haven't had a chance to look at it, I'm you know willing to come back and could go over that with you at that time. The um, did you have anything to add? I do not. Please. Okay, in support of. Okay, <laughs> no, no problem at all. Okay, and. And so this is similar to a request made a year or two ago. Is that correct? Okay. Is there anything different in this request than the past request? Okay. No, it's, I, it's, it's, I just changed the date at the top. Right. It's the only thing that's different. Okay, that's what I thought. I just I remembered the, the previous discussion. And so um, with regards to personal access, Wi-Fi versus just using Wi-Fi on your personal devices, what, why? So <clears throat> a few reasons. One, uh, not all of us have unlimited data. Uh, me, me included, I, I just don't use it that much. Um, <clears throat> most companies, uh, your bigger cell phone companies, will throttle back your speeds uh, later in the month as you use data. Uh, it's slower. Uh, <clears throat> there's a number of reasons. I mean, we have internet access just with a cell phone right now, but I can't bring my laptop. I, I would have to like hotspot to my phone, and it, you know, basically, it, it's it's 2019. <laughs> So, you know, Wi-Fi is pretty prevalent everywhere you go. It's almost like electricity and running water. It's, it's in, in this part of the country, right? Correct. Yeah, yeah. And, not, and, not right. Everywhere. Yeah, in first world <laughs> problems, correct. Uh, it, where we live in our community, uh, it, it's pretty much a staple of day-to-day -day use. And, and, and really, we just, want, uh, we just want permission to, you know, put that equipment in those buildings. Um, and to refresh, what kind of equipment are you looking to put in? So, <laughs> I talked at length with Spectrum and... Obviously, they weren't allowed in the buildings yet because I didn't have any approval. They think that the, the existing wires that come into the building, which they already own, we, they can piggyback our Wi-Fi on that. Yeah. So it would be a router and a modem, just like you would have in your home. And perhaps, like at the bigger stations, uh, a cable with an extender that would go above the ceiling mm -hmm. uh, to drop like near the bunk rooms. Uh, and beyond that, there would be no equipment. Okay. Um, the uh, How many individuals do we have in a station at any one given time typically <coughs> that just depends at, as at speaking specifically let's just say um, two three and four so at twos um, in the summertime it can be as low as three typically five that's the manning there so okay. there's five folks okay uh, and at ones there could be seven or you know if there's uh, other things happening here you could have 10 12 okay. people down here so okay and so at this point, Chief, um, we, we, there's no re restriction or is there a restriction on um, uh, any member of the union essentially carrying their personal cell phone with them? No, sir. Okay. And so it, it's reasonable to believe that you have your phone when you're here. Um, and so would we consider a mobile hotspot to be anything different than a cellular phone? From a personal use standpoint, I don't think so. Okay. And a mobile hotspot will allow up to 10 people to connect to a mobile hotspot. And so from a cost and a management standpoint, I would think you'd want to consider at least um, a basic, you can buy a mobile hotspot. They're, they're much more expensive, actually. We, we they're, look they're about $99. But the data usage is what, what the, gets you. You're just better off to have a hardwired. Sure. Uh, but there's other ramifications. And I'm, I'm simply saying as an alternative. Right. Yeah, we so have looked into that. If I look for something that, if I look at nothing and I look at something, there's always something in between nothing and something. Sure. And it's usually better than nothing. And as an interim solution, I would think it might be worth taking a look at. And it sounds like you maybe already have, but to shop those mobile hotspots, because they do have some that have unlimited data. Um, and you would only need four of them. 
and up to 10 people can connect. Um, as opposed to using your personal device as a hotspot, because even on my phone, I could connect right now up to five people to it. Right. But I wouldn't want to connect <coughs> everybody to that. Right. So, um, but that's what I was trying to get to is there is technically, there's no restriction on you having four hotspots, one at each station, and connecting your devices to that, and then sharing the cost however you would share it, as opposed to some bolting something onto, whether it's physical or, or virtual, onto the hardware or the wiring or the cabling of the stations as, as an alternative to consider. I'm not saying yes, no, this, it's yeah. just, hey, right. have you thought about this, and have you shopped it? We, we have, um, <clears throat> and again, when I, when I talk to the folks at, at Spectrum, you know, the, the, the maximum uh, hardware or invasiveness that would be would be would, to, would be one coaxial cable that would come into the building, and then nothing more than a box that plugged into an outlet, which uses I mean almost no electricity, it, no more than a cell phone charger really. Right, and I and I I don't think it's like like you just said. In my opinion, it's not a utility. Um, it's not an excessive utility expense. It's the opportunity for public perception to be that we are providing unlimited. Net, uh, streaming of Netflix and we have no idea what that individual is watching on Netflix nor do we care as long as it's not ob ob obscene or, or sure. uh, offensive to the other people that happen to be in that room but if it's coming into a township building and that hits the news it's going to be a Beaver Creek Township firefighter was watching porn on a Beaver Creek Township provided um, uh, internet connection and while I'm here that can't happen sure so in uh, <coughs> response to that, and, and I'm not saying anybody would, right, right, but it, it, it can happen. It and would be, it wouldn't be provided by Beaver Creek Township. It would be provided by us. Public perception, yeah. sure. That's and that's two, we we have rules in place for that as as we stand right now. Have we ever broken a rule? I I can't answer whether we have or not. But I'm saying we do, right. and the opportunity to do that at present is still there with Absolutely. a cell phone or anything. Absolutely. So really, the only thing that would change with adding this Wi-Fi is convenience, speed, and public and perception. The opportunity for public perception. The opportunity, I, I would agree with that. That's the challenge. And that's why I say if it's your hotspot, it's not attached to the township building. It's not. It, it's still going to be hard to explain, trust me, if somebody files a grievance or files a complaint against another individual. It, the, the, the newspaper will most likely still project it as a Beaver Creek Township problem and a problem of the fire department, not that person individually. To That's the challenge. Sure, and to my knowledge, um, and I'm just throwing this out there for information, um, most departments around us already have this existing, uh, you know, Kettering, Springfield, Dayton, I would ask them to boost their amperage. Right, so you <laughs> right. Just point, stand on the roof. <laughs> yeah, it's in the lightning. Uh, and, and there has been I'm no. I'm trying to make light of it. I'm sure, trying, right, I'm right. Trying to help I'm, you find something in between right. what you're asking for and what. Right. And what, I, and I do. Can already I understand do. your concern. I, I just and we've asked those, those jurisdictions. In the history of it, uh, most of them have been for, almost ten years. Uh, they've had, uh, either union owned or or whatever Wi-Fi and and they have in no cases of and every company that has their first case says that and every yeah. <laughs> school and every school that has their first teacher sure. has that and sure. say they say boy this never happened before yeah. how, I'm just how giving you data to how didn't we think of that just throwing it out there I appreciate that um, I, I don't know if you had other questions or you no, may have a different opinion no, I, I mean it's something we have to work through um, so being I think attached to the building maybe there's a workaround with the hotspots Okay. Have uh, you quoted the hotspots recently? I know you've been through this a year ago or so, but I mean, is as, as recently as late in, in 2018, uh, and, and it's just it really isn't feasible to do a hotspot um, from from both a data speed and use. Uh, it's pretty darn good. I ran a business off one. Yeah, and, and I've, only I've, because I had to. I've, I've had to deliver service, uh, <laughs> and it was ninety nine dollars a month unlimited. I, that's why I'm saying that you might check it, even if you had to get two of them. I mean, Spectrum is going to want to uh, piggyback on uh, our services. I mean, yeah, our cables. Right. I mean, it's, it's their it's cable. They can yeah, it. but they're right. going to. Right. That's easier for them, you know. And I just 
see if there was a hot spot that could happen that might right. it might be easy it's easier for us I could get you more data some some harder data if, if that would would help um, I guess in, in the end whether it be you know a box that still has to plug into a wall a hot spot still needs electricity right. or, or well, they actually have a battery or yeah, you can sure them. but or <laughs> or a different box that plugs into a wall with a right. wire to, to me it's it's still a box it's still providing a signal for our use one is just more economic and, and better really it's it's better one you know one's an old Ford Pinto and the other's a Ferrari pretty much so thank you you're very welcome More thanks for the presentation hopefully and I'll share back some information with what I've seen recently with unlimited plans on on those devices um, it may be a, something interim I won't be here forever so maybe someone in the future will vote differently but okay so do we do you need to see us back for a, a hard vote, or what? What are? What do we good do from here? Um, we can. Def I guess we'll, we can we'll defer, defer until Mr. Mr. Roberts, Roberts is back. here, and then we'll, I have some ideas to give to Mr. Zaharoff that we'll talk about. And sure. Maybe he can get back with you. All right. Thank maybe you. Maybe something in the in the middle. Okay. Thanks thank for your you. time. Thank, thank you for coming. Yeah, thank you very much. Be safe. <clears throat> are there any citizens desiring to speak today? Hearing none, or is, there's no old business, no new business. Administrator, Dayton Xenia Road Project. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I believe Mr. Zaharyev had in the packet some information for you regarding the uh, Dayton Xenia Road expansion and how it impacts Station 62. Right. Um, the summation is uh, he believes that it's uh, probably worth us moving forward with it uh, and accepting the township's good faith offer, and, or the city's good faith offer to the township. Um, and he has a motion uh, to that extent in the packet. If you have any other questions, I don't have much information beyond that, um, but I can certainly take questions back. I do know there is a time deadline uh, between this and when the city would have to proceed with eminent domain to keep the project on schedule. So if the board is amenable to it, this will streamline the process moving forward. And I do have some questions <coughs> on that. I'm not sure Mr. Uh, Kretz may have some too. Um, and I don't know if you can. I mean, I saw the pictures of the um, light pole. Is that going to be taken out? Yeah, the flagpole will be taken and out, and it will be taken out through the project. It would be up to us to replace it in a, a location that we could replace it once the project is complete. And so, for so my question is then, for the appraiser's estimate of fourteen thousand two hundred thirty-eight dollars that we would receive for the the parcel that's indicated. That does not uh, reimburse us for the cost of putting in the, the uh, flagpole again and, and bench and any of that. That is my understanding, correct. Is, that's <coughs> is that something we would install ourselves or we would have to hire a third party? I'll defer that to Mr. Schroeder. We have installed flagpoles before. Uh, it's just, again, it's going to depend on the size. Um, okay. Can we, will, we, electricity. will we be able to salvage the existing pole? Is it sleeved or I is it in concrete? To, I'm not 100% certain if that one's sleeved or not. I, I could run up and take a look at that um, at some point and, and find out. Okay. Um, I don't believe it is, but I'm not certain. And I'm not 100% sure. Well, if it, it's a 25 foot or less flagpole, yeah, so yeah. these are, yeah. yeah, typically they're set in 24 inch diameter concrete with a right. sand, with either a sand sleeve or a steel sleeve. Yeah. Yeah. Just pull, put a solid tube. Okay. Well, I guess my concern is, is that, um, you know, there's electricity run there, there's concrete there, there's flagpole there, there's greenery. Um, so we're not going to, they just gave us money for the land. Correct. But not for, I mean, I'd like to see what not it costs. to restore the site. To, re yeah, what the cost would be for us to have to restore that site. And I think that would be what's a fair request back to the city. I mean, what's that time deadline? There is. It, oh, what is it? Do we know? Um, Technically, it was over the weekend, and I had mentioned to Alex about reaching out to the city because, one, your meeting is now, but also to extend that time. Generally, if you reach out, that's not necessarily a problem because you can you can counter, make a counter well, that's to what this I'm good faith yeah. offer to... Having been on the other side yeah. there, I <laughs> don't do know that happens. <laughs> so um, it was my understanding that... Um, 
they were okay with, I, I don't know what parameters were talked about in terms of time, but I had mentioned to Alex, you need to make sure that they're extending this time a little bit for you guys. Well. So, um, so the, the simple way is you could, you could, we could technically approve, the, and I don't know if you had other questions, but we could, con we could technically approve this conditional upon them reinstalling the flagpole and electric and landscape. And then if they, then it would put them back to approve that. Well, if you, t if you approve it though, you're approving their good faith offer. Yeah. Conditional you though. Why can't you make it conditional upon? I think you've got to make them a counter. Yeah. Okay. Well, with that, because and I'd like to know. Because the statutory procedure, um, I think you need to make them a counter. Okay. And did we know, I don't have the history myself, but you know, who put the flagpole in in the beginning to, was it the we were, the township did? The uh, union I'm did? certain that the original was put in by the volunteers. Um, I believe the current one was put in when we rebuilt 62 and we did the renovations to 62 uh, several years ago. The township. So the township put yeah. that in at that time because I believe it replaced the original. I'd like to get at least a cost of what it would, a costing of what it would do to replace that area, the concrete, the electrical, the shrubbery, the pole, and get a guesstimated cost on that. And, and that was what I would like to take back to the city as a counter. Because somebody's going to have to pay for it. Right, no, and I, 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 I'm coming in a little late. I, I understand. The, the, the new design of how this lays out now. So um, one, I don't know how much fun it is left. I don't know. Right. One question would be if, if the current poll can be salvaged or not. Mm -hmm. um, because if it can't, then that's obviously a Another $780. Price. I just priced a 20 foot, and it's 880 for a 25 foot. Um, to installed from National Flag Company in Cincinnati, including the flag, um, the 24-inch concrete and the uh, installation, everything. The on a, from a from a lighting standpoint, um, you obviously can either hard pipe it and put a piece of conduit in that concrete, or you can go solar. Uh, but either way, there's a cost. And then I don't know if there's a permit that would need to be. I don't think you need a permit for that from the city, or if they would waive it, uh, but we would want yeah, that waived. We'll, we'll put that as part of our counter. <laughs> but obviously, so. Um, but it's an expense that we'd have to incur, and I don't want to incur that expense without having some kind of so reimbursement. If you can uh, maybe evaluate that, and then um, so we need to send them something back that we need just one more meeting to firm up, and that these are the concerns. I would see if they would extend Because they could eminent time. domain, but obviously that's not going to happen I, quickly. Yeah. Um, I would and we don't really want that. We, no, we just want to no. be made and whole. I, they don't want that either. That's more of a cost to them anyways. Yeah. So, the key is just know. be made whole. Mm -hmm. I think if, if they say that they need something sooner than the next meeting, then I think there could be a... We could do a special... Or we could do a response back that would say to include the cost of not to exceed, yeah, or something along those lines. But I would think that they would like to work with you all. I think so. So if we if we said you would approve with a not to exceed twenty five hundred dollars to replace the or to reinstall a similar flagpole, landscaping and lighting. I think you could do it that way. Yeah, that that would be more than what it would cost. And it would it would cover it up to, and we could provide receipts for that. Yeah. Or docu we could provide doc documentation as to the cost, so direct or indirect. I mean, I think you could put together a response that would do that. Okay. Or you know, or ask for additional time if they can't do the additional time, then do the response and not to exceed. But you'd have to do the response in a sep in a special meeting if they don't have additional time. Unless you agreed to that today. Okay. Yeah. Are you comfortable with a not to exceed amount? But how, do you know that as a very good figure that twenty five hundred dollars would take it and put it back to normal, back to what it was? Eight hundred and eighty National Flag Company eight hundred and eighty to install a twenty five foot pole with the twenty four inch diameter concrete apron. Okay. Includes a four foot by six foot American flag. And then we have to add the And then electrical, electrical would be labor. Yeah, electrical, can, if there's assumedly, it, that depends if you're going to put solar or powered back on it. Well, right, and again, and I don't know where, I'm, I'm coming in late, so I don't know how much fun it, we, 
the pole to end toward the building? Or we I would assume it's going to be on the east side based off the amount of funders. Which would be new conduit right. if you so ran it. New conduit and the so light that's wherever. I would go solar if you could. So again, 200 bucks, you can get a floodlight. Mm -hmm. Is that a debate? I mean, I think yeah. that's a lot of money. Yeah, if we can get one that runs all night, I don't have a problem with that. I don't know the, the quality solars. of the lights. Yeah. Bottom line is that would that would leave you roughly you know, twenty five hundred minus eight hundred and eighty, right. so I minus nine hundred. That'd, that'd be sufficient for hard piping it or. I think that's a. I would, solar. I would make say that's a good number. Okay. I don't have any problem with that. Then we're putting that into the counter. Okay. We can do that today. So if we motion here. if we look at this motion and we hypothetically said, I mean, the amount of in the amount that's stated. Um, and so, uh, Ms. Frick, if we if we modified the motion, that's if it said in the amount of fourteen and change, um, plus an amount not to exceed two thousand five hundred dollars for the um, relocation installation um, of the flagpole lighting and landscaping. Yeah, I think we could do it that way. Yeah. Okay. An amount not to exceed. <coughs> I'm okay with that. Okay. You want <coughs> I don't have this written down, Miss Aaron, so I will. I got the not to exceed 2500 for relocation, installation, lighting, and what was the last one? Landscaping. Landscaping. I'll see if I can remember what I said. I'll make a motion to accept the good faith offer from the city of Beaver Creek in the amount of $1,438. $1, plus an amount not to exceed $2,500 to relocate, reinstall the flagpole, lighting, and landscaping, and approve the temporary easements for the Dayton Xenia Road Project, GRE-142-1.21, and authorize the Township Administrator to sign all documents for the project on behalf of the board. I'll second that motion. Mr. Kratz. Yes. Ms. Wallace. Yes. What page are you reading that on? 71, 71 of Thank you. 112. 112. And I can forward a copy of a quote, just to short, I'll send it to the administrator, um, and then you can take it from there. So, because um, obviously the township would be tax exempt. And, so. But that makes us whole. And I think that. The, the citizens are, are going to make the point of having a flagpole at our at our to. fire station. So and you certainly want it no, as well. That hadn't, yeah. Okay. Anything else from the administrator? No, ma'am. Okay, Green County Sheriff's Office biweekly activity report. Good afternoon. I had two questions. Yes, ma'am. Um. The, were there three pedestrian hitchhikers or just one person that just on the report or just one person that was well it must have been three different kind because it's three different dates here it is so um, what's the I mean I'm what's the rule in the township on the pedestrian hi hitchhiker or on or on county roads so so what wh how those calls go out <coughs> go, they go into a dispatch center and then it goes into the CAD and then they, they're, they're pulling up um, it's not an interpretive thing. So the dispatcher has to listen to what the caller says, what in CAD lines up mostly uh, with what, what's being said. So those calls were, they can go out also, you'll probably see check the welfares, um, and depending on what dispatcher and how they hear and interpret, um, somebody just walking up the road, um, it, a hot day, and we'll get a call from somebody that just says, hey, can you check on, on this person? Um, one of the it was one of our very hot days recently and there was somebody in a long sleeve coat walking and so for that reason alone <coughs> they wanted us to check the welfare in that case that call can go out as a check the welfare or it could go down as a pedestrian in the roadway right. okay. um, sometimes we'll get calls as well too valley road is a good example <coughs> where there's a not not the best place to walk along the side of the road in some places upper bellbrook similar pretty mm -hmm. big drop off so 
people that are walking and they're entitled to walk and allowed to walk. There's nothing illegal about that. If they obstruct or get into the roadway, that becomes a problem. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, if they're trying to navigate from a, a terrain that they could walk on, now there's a, a big ditch. They'll come out on the road for just a bit. Um, no criminality in that, but we could also get a call on that. So those are the calls that go in, dispatch then attaches um, to it. The way our, our system is set up is that I think the pedestrian slash hitchhiker is, is one that they can, they can choose from. It doesn't necessarily oh. mean that they're hitchhiking. It just okay. means that they are, were in the roadway. Okay, because that's, I was like, do you pick people up when they're hitchhiking? You know, so I didn't right. know, I didn't think that happened, but mm -hmm. um, with that coding, I, by the time I get done with this, this, this stint here as a trustee, I'll know all your codes. But the other code question I had on was suspicious person. Mm -hmm. So again, um, someone called in at saying that there was a suspicious person around there, either was it their home or? Sure, and again, those calls can come out from um, somebody who, who knocks on the door, <clears throat> who's soliciting. That call can go into dispatch and dispatch can listen to what the caller's saying. Hey, there's somebody at my door, I don't know who that is. And it can just go out as a suspicious person we get there when in fact it's just somebody knocking on the door selling Girl Scout cookies, you know, or, or something to that matter. So okay. a suspicious person often, more often than not, turns out not to be suspicious. Mm -hmm. um, in the case of what you're reading there, um, I, I believe the person wasn't necessarily seen, but yet that, that they thought they heard voices outside the house um, and, and that type of thing, and they just call us to, okay. to, to go investigate. So. It, it, most most of the calls that that you'll see and that you'll get um, are, are are going to come into a dispatch. Many different dispatchers working, they they hear what this person's saying and try to match it up with with what is already coded, so so that it goes out. Often, what is put out is not reality. <laughs> but when you have uh, when 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 we see these reports, mm -hmm. that's that's saying that you somebody a, sh a sheriff um, representative did go to that. Like, absolutely they were yeah. dispatched absolutely this is just not dispatched and these responded. reports are not just showing call them that's what oh, there's they're. nothing that comes out on that that there's not a deputy that that's what i every, that's what i assumed that's that i just wanted, of the time. That wanted to make sure the, the only asterisk you can put on that is that there there, there could be something that um, might be a uh, an alarm for example we had an alarm that was malfunctioning uh, to a house and on the eighth alarm that day after speaking with the alarm company um, then that that call didn't get somebody sent to it because right. it was it was problematic and, and, and whatever but outside of that any time a call is generated uh, we're okay. going to go 100, 100 times out of 100. Thank you I appreciate that. Mr. Chris did you have any questions? I just had a couple um, with regards to you brought up solicitors yes um, and so some of the HOAs have um, signage that yes. states uh, no soliciting right um, yet they're public roads, um, public sidewalks. Um, now the, the sidewalk from uh, whatever path leads from the sidewalk to the front door is on private property, although part of it might be in the public right of way. Um, it, at some point it might, if you're, um, if you're making any HOA visits with the administrator um, uh, for their annual meetings, it might be helpful just to provide some clarification as to what the sheriff can or cannot do uh, sure. with regards to solicitors. In this, in the certain, in the situation I'm ref thinking of, it was um, solicitors on hoverboards that were mm -hmm. essentially um, hitting doors four or five times a day and trying to convince people, even though they'd been there three hours ago, that they should change their mind. Mm -hmm. So there's there's a there's a pest. Sure. Uh, or you know, it's it's a it's an annoyance, but it may not be illegal. Um, sure. So, and, and to to your point. Uh, definitely on our agenda to uh, with Mr. Zaharith and, and attending those meetings he and I will be going to but as we also um, via word of mouth or if uh, the citizens report via the web page and, and they get complaint or the complaint will come to me then then not only will I tell them and, and sure. give them what 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 you're asking for but encourage them to share uh, with and in some cases we've also been able to the community's private Facebook Right. accounts for their HOAs we, we requested that they post that on there and any clarification have our number and we'll, we'll be happy to go forward and <coughs> it might even be something where if there's just a you know just a even like a, a half a page letter or something that you know the 
the administrator can circulate to those um, HOAs and say, Certainly. hey, post this out to your people just so they're Certainly. aware. It's a seasonal issue. It is. Typically. It um, is. It's not a year-round issue. Right. The second question I had, yes. um, and someone asked me this question and I couldn't answer it. Um, so from a panhandling standpoint uh, yes. perspective, uh, yes. what are the rules within the unincorporated portion of the township relative to panhandling? So, so there is no law on panhandling. That's, that's, <coughs> that's a code. Yep. Um, it, as, as far as, let me rephrase that, there's no law on panhandling to solicit. So a person um, can solicit, you might have saw in the news, I think it, uh, the case came out of Columbus, the city of Beaver Creek was affected by it as well too, yep. where they had city ordinances right. that did not allow that, and that was appealed up and considered to be um, First Amendment right, free speech, right. that they could stand there and hold a sign. <coughs> what you can't do, however, is you can't go into a street. You can't go into a street and get the money. Once you go into the street and you get the money, now you're breaking the section of law that's um, that's actually under hitchhiking, and it okay. a little further down says you can't go into the the roadway. So once you go into the roadway now to retrieve the money, or or, or at that point now you've broken the law, okay. and primarily you're seeing several of those, which is also seasonal, that happened up at the uh, on ramp there at Colonel Glenn off of 675 by Dave Dennis, right. and whenever so the this individual's question was relative to mm -hmm. um, being hit up apparently repeatedly for gas money at um, the corner down here mm. uh, at the intersection. So that okay. there were individuals that were asking for gas money and just going car to car to car to car. Oh, and okay. Um, it's on private property. It's on, it, it is, and, and there wouldn't be anything um, yeah. illegal about that. However, there's also a catch-all um, of, of annoyance right. and on that private property. So if the person who's managing the private property at the time, so the the manager or supervisor or whoever feels that that person is causing an annoyance, we can step in, intervene, sir, and, and do what we can. Okay. That's all I have. Well, thank, thank you, you so much. You're welcome. Be safe. Okay. Human Resources Biweekly Activity Report. Yes, the Human, human Resources Manager is uh, in Xenia Township uh, assisting with negotiations today. Um, so you have the report in the packet, but I don't have any additional information. Would anybody know what, on number 10 of her report, what SL means? Sick leave, I'm ass I would assume you've okay. seen that before. Yeah. Thank you. That's the only question I had. Mr. Kretz, any questions? No. All right, moving on to zoning. Green County Complete Counts Committee. Mr. Amaroy. Hi. Good afternoon, board. Um, before you is a resolution of support for the Green County Complete <coughs> Counts Committee, uh, which refers to the decennial census activities ramping up now and taking place throughout the year 2020. Um, in conjunction with this, uh, let me also say that there will be an event tomorrow at the County Commissioner's meeting room at 9 a.m. that will be effectively a, uh, a kickoff presser for the Complete Counts Committee and making public the support of public officials throughout Greene County. It is nominally the case that all political jurisdictions within the county have representation on this complete counts committee and the role of the committee is simply put to maximize our effectiveness in, in getting citizens of Greene County to uh, respond to the census questionnaire by whatever means they find most convenient. This time for the first time we'll be able to respond to a census questionnaire online uh, it's also possible to do it over the phone. You no longer simply have to wait for someone to knock on your door. And so um, this resolution simply seeks your support for the activities of this committee. And I'm serving as the member, as, as, our, as the representative from Beaver Creek Township on this committee. So. Thank you. <coughs> I'll make a motion to approve a resolution to support Greene County Complete Counts Committee um, as presented. I'll second that. Mr. Kretz. Yes. Ms. Wallace. Yes. 
and you're uh, Thank you. be one that's going to be presented. Um, yes, um, there we have two of them here. There so was, yeah, we have. There was one in a folder we, for yeah, your yeah. signatures yep. to present to the right. commission tomorrow. Great. Right. And you're handling that. Mm -hmm. Okay. And bi-weekly report. Any questions? If, if there are any questions or comments on the zoning and planning department bi-weekly report. I had none. I had none either. Just okay. continue your and now hard work and busyness. I had a quick question. So when I look back, I have no zoning commission minutes from 2018. So I know Lori has can put in her past reports that she's working on them, but I don't have any for 2018. Okay. So if you could follow up with her on that. I will do too. that. I don't recall having many meetings in 2018 but I know we had some yeah it's two or three uh, there right. weren't that many I just was going to follow it back up I don't want to I don't want to mi misplace right. them if, if she sent them to me but I just understood wanted to follow up. Thank understood you. thank you appreciate that reminder yeah. no thank other you questions? thank you thanks thank you, board. road department is there anything IT um, oh, I have I'm nothing sorry. for IT. Okay. Okay, I just missed that one. All right, this is where I have all my questions. I'm just kidding. Oh, fire away. I thought Good it was afternoon. Me, but it's not this I'm sorry. I thought uh, it was fire. <laughs> um, we have a request here for then and now purchase for Medic 68. Um, I don't have. Wasn't here for all the details, but the crews did report that they had issues getting it to shut off. They tried to pull the key out, still wouldn't shut off. So we had to just turn the disconnect battery switch to shut it off. So our software that we have at the garage does not go back as far as this vehicle. So we had to send it out to a dealer to be able to pull that information. Once they pulled it, they knew what to diagnose and it was made, the, they gave the authorization to repair it. So um, I don't have the and the, kit, the repair came in more than yeah. The, yes, the repair came in at two thousand six hundred twenty-six dollars and forty-nine cents. So we're just a little bit over the twenty-five hundred dollar threshold. So we just need to make a motion for um, was to it, authorize that repair. And it was one vendor, or was yes, it was one. It was Rush um, <laughs> Truck Center of Dayton was the only vendor that Rush or Interstate. I'm sorry. Rush. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. I'll make a motion to approve a then and now purchase request 10160 to interstate billing for the repairs to Medic 68 in the amount of $2,626.49 and authorize the township administrator to sign for the board. Second. Mr. Kretz. Yes. Ms. Wallace. Yes. Thank you very much. The second item on for the road department is the motion for the mutual aid agreement for the tornado. Um, cooperation that we got from the multiple jurisdictions. Um, this is so that the FEMA will, will allow us to reimburse those entities for their time and equipment and pers personnel. Okay. Has that been submitted to legal yet or it's? It has and in fact I came back with red line changes to it. I was trying to look at it to see if I could tell if those had been And I believe the one that he has submitted to the board has all of the changes in it. That's what he told me. So it, may, it was not resent in the packet, but the copy the board has has your changes in it. So is it pending or is it subject to legals? No, I review and I made changes. Um, there, there wasn't anything significant. There was some just some wording and some wordsmithing a little bit, but. Okay. Um, so the, what's in our packet when we say as presented is the it? the one that you have in that paperclip packet, I believe, has all the changes incorporated. If you want to verify that, or we could just do it as as approved by legal, as amended by legal, and verify yeah. it so rather than as presented, just as amended. That might be the safest, just to make sure the right copy got to the right place. But I do know that his intention was that that had all of the changes that he recommended. Okay, so we'll just instead of as presented, be as amended. Yeah. Okay. I'll make a motion to accept the mutual aid agreement agreement as amended by Beaver Creek Township Legal Council to auth and authorize the <coughs> Township Administrator to sign for the board. I'll second that motion. Mr. Kretz. Yes. Ms. Wallace. Yes. 
And then lastly, it's just the bi-weekly end report. I didn't have any questions. I have none. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much. Fire. Good afternoon, board. Um, we just have uh, one two-part issue for the board today. Uh, the first part is uh, we would like to go ahead and apply for an assistance to firefighters grant um, in the amount just over $600,000 for the replacement of our uh, SCBA. The SCBA that we have now were purchased actually in 2006 using an AFG grant um, and they are all end of life in 2021. The manufacturer will no longer support them. Uh, parts are already be are difficult to get a hold of uh, and they will not meet the standard after that date. So we'd like to take the opportunity to apply for a grant to replace those um, and then if the grant were to fall through that would give us an opportunity to go ahead and through our normal budget process to still uh, get the replacements but uh, we think it'd be a good use and a high likelihood for us to get another approved grant uh, from uh, FEMA for the assistance to firefighters. The total project cost uh, we will come back for at a future date so this is simply for permission to proceed with the uh, with the um, application process uh, to give you an idea the project itself is about 800,000 but not all of those costs are reimbursable to the grant so the grant total would be in that I think it's 614 if I recall correctly um, the second part of this is a request um, and this is the first time uh, that we would do this but it's a request to spend two thousand dollars on a professional grant writer um, we have had success obviously in the past uh, but our success has been mixed and with the um, quality of the project we have and the opportunity we'd like to maximize the likelihood of us getting the grant award uh, by using professional grant writer that two thousand um, dollars if we are awarded the grant we would be able to get 1500 of that reimbursed back to us uh, if the grant is not awarded then the whole 2000 obviously would uh, come from us so we're risking the 2000 with the possibility of getting 1500 of it as part of that overall grant project reimbursed so i'll be happy to answer any of the questions the board may have but we're looking for um, just a verbal we can go ahead with the grant application and then um, the approval of the purchase request if the board is uh, amenable. Do we have a history with this grant writer? No, sir. We don't have a history with any grant writers. We've always done it internally before. Thought, right here, okay. we've yeah. always had it did we find them on Google or did we have uh, they come to us as a referral from someone that successfully uh, was awarded a grant? Our SCBA committee um, went out and researched and they specifically, uh, the recommendation for this particular company is because they have a high success rate with AFG and specifically with SCBA projects in the AFG so they're essentially the best subject matter expert that we could find on it but they searched them out they were not solicited to my knowledge well sometimes you have to give to get and to be able to put forward two thousand dollars with the possibility of getting a portion of six hundred fourteen thousand plus reimbursement of 1500 I think is a, is a worthwhile risk for us and that's my recommendation to save the township so. monies yes ma'am one, one thing I wanted to point out that um, unfortunately I was only able to let um, Nathan and, and Mr. Hess, Mr. Harris noted this morning is with respect to the statement of work that they mm -hmm. provided one of the concerns that I had was a lot of the terms relate to um, statement of work and the, the master service agreements they relate to specific terms of the agreement but there aren't any terms listed so for instance you have this renewable annual renewable um, grant finder license and it's you have to end it within 60 days of the term but there's nowhere in here that identifies the term so I think you guys need to clarify what the term of that is because otherwise you're going to have this renewable grant writer which is absolutely not the intent you're correct um, but that was one of my concerns um, and then it made reference to a lot of um, concerns respect to confidentiality and I just think while in some respects public records don't re uh, or there is a an exception to public records for things that are protected by state and federal law which would be certain um, proprietary information things like that but I think it's always wise to let the 
the part the other parties know that you all are subject to public records exception sometimes that information that they may believe to be confidential is not is not confidential or may not be deemed confidential you know from someone responding to a public records request so I just wanted to point those couple things out so it sounds like potentially in spirit we want to move forward with the grant process but we want to review the legal a little bit more before we well and I know expense I know Nathan got the the information that she just referenced but it's not been to the company to get their essentially approval so if we move forward with it it would have to be with with the caveat that it would be pending legal approval just as they have has the consultant provided references I don't know the answer that question okay I think it would be important or at least prudent to ask for a few references and yeah I know we have their their record but not their references and sometimes those align and sometimes they don't all right and in spirit I agree with hiring a professional grant writer for something of this scale if if what you're saying is that either you do not have the time or the expertise in-house to do it or or both so but if so if in that case any portion a hundred or six hundred thousand of a six hundred thousand dollar expense is worth a two thousand dollar effort because you would expend that with an internal cost one way or the other so potentially more if you if you don't have that expertise in-house so but I think at least is there a time stamp on when you need to so the the only time stamp is we have a guaranteed price right now based off of last year and so if it extended will it extend that to the next meeting that I don't know but for the due diligence it's probably I would think it would be worth saying that this is what we're doing and then if they want the business obviously that I think if you went back with the message of that at least for myself and I believe you're saying you're supportive of the concept it's just we need to do a little bit more due diligence on who are they and who have they and usually they're very willing to provide lists of customers that were happy yes so and it's specifically to that as CBA so yes sir all right so and then the legal make sure that we're in alignment there to make sure they would accept the changes we would which we assume they will I mean it mentions it says the initial term of this agreement is specified that a certain end dates above but there are no certain end dates okay and I think because there are other terms that are reliant on those dates we need to have that we have a grant award date we know when that is correct yes so if if you if you apply for one you know when that period would be within a reasonable and so you could at least tie the term to that yeah it's the period opening and end date are well publicized known it okay in advance we know it's going to be in August we don't know the exact dates but when they make the announcement they tell you both start and end then yeah I would I would get a list of references they've done that the specific type of grant we're looking for and I think it's important what miss Brooks said about the confidentiality I mean they could try to come back at us on our confidentiality and as a township we don't have any we have to have subject public records requests we have to provide that so I think it's a good caveat to put in there yes ma'am all right so we'll get those changes that information bring it back to the board next meeting okay and the only other thing I had for the board is our bi-weekly activity report and be happy to answer any other questions you may have it's been hot the crews have still been busy outside but we've tried to keep them in as much as possible it's just we can see there's a large number of pub eds again that they've been out doing this that time of year do you have any other questions I have nothing other than make sure we all stay hydrated yes sir as best possible thank you thank you thank you miss Brooke nothing miss Aaron nothing um since we have our administrator out and mr. Roberts are out I think I'll bypass the trustee meetings I don't think there's too much has gone on and there's nothing yet on the investment committee so we'll move on to I'll make a motion to go into executive session under a high revised code section 121.22 g1 to consider the compensation of a public employee I'll second that motion mr. Kratz yes miss Wallace yes I 
at uh, two thirty p.m. I will make a motion to come out of executive session. Second, Mr. Craig. Yes. Ms. Waller. Yes. And at two thirty, I'll make a motion to adjourn. I second, Mr. Craig. Yes. Ms. Waller. Yes.